Hello, welcome back to the Bibliophile Hour. I'm your host, Erica the Bibliophile. Before we go any further, I would like to dedicate this episode to my friend, Jaquel Haynes, aka JQ, aka the Godiva God, and so many other things. You are missed, you are loved, and I'm so sad and baffled to even have to be saying this but rest in peace my friend we love you we miss you so much okay my beautiful people we are here for the final part of Jolie and Keandre against the in his good girl and let's just jump into it so if you remember in part two, the way the book ended was Joe Lee walking into TK's office and seeing a girl sitting in front of him on his desk. So this book starts off with her grabbing the mystery girl off the desk by her hair. And it's nobody but Cheyenne in a wig. She was telling him that she is pregnant and it had him stuck, which if you can also remember... Jolie already told him this and he swore up and down that it wasn't his baby. So why is Jolie coming to sit in front of you? <clears throat> Excuse me. Why is Jolie, I mean not Jolie, Cheyenne coming and sitting in front of you with her legs spread in front of you telling you that she's pregnant having you stuck? What you thought Jolie was lying? So I'm calling foul on TK right there. And his parents also come in and Sabrina is elated when she finds out that Cheyenne is pregnant and that she's going to have a grandchild. And of course, this is also something that could pull Jolie and TK further apart. So she's even more elated about that with her hate and self. Jolie throws a lamp at him, but he ducks it. And, you know, like then she apologizes. She attacks him, then apologizes for thinking that they could actually be together because there's been so much drama in the short amount of time that they've been getting to know each other. And she wishes him well. TK pleads with her, you know, telling her that he's so in love with her, but she still just walks out. But she doesn't walk out to leave. She goes back to the party, which I don't understand. Because it's like, if it's over, I'm leaving. But Jolie and Octavia stay and they get drunk. And TK has his driver take Octavia home, but tells him to bring Jolie back to pick him up so they can ride together. And the next morning, TK has the family's personal doctor, Dr. Sherman, come to his home to draw their blood because last night, while she was drunk and going off, she tells him that he has to be cleared of any diseases before he thinks about having sex with her again. So, of course, the family has money. They have their own personal doctor. Yeah, I'm just going to call him up and tell him to come over to the house so we can get this done and out the way. Because ain't nothing going to stop me from having sex. And Jolie gets lightheaded at the sight of any type of blood, though. And that kind of boggles my mind. I'm like, sis, how are you going to tell him that he has to get this done? Then when he's getting it done, she's on the floor crawling around because just the sight of blood makes her nauseous. And it's just like, girl, what? And TK plays a few recordings of her last night. And it's just a mess. She's crying, you know, asking him why she's not enough for him. And then, of course, saying the thing about having to get tested before he can stick his BBD back in her. And it's just like, girl, it's a mess. After the doctor is done, though, because he draws both of their bloods. After they're done, they decide to go to breakfast while waiting for the results. And TK tells Jolie he does not believe that Cheyenne's baby is his, but if by some miracle it is, he will co-parent, which is 
all you can ask for really because if the couple isn't together doesn't see the relationship working they're gonna cope here you can't think that he's not gonna be in his child's life he lets Jolie know he wants he wants to be with her that baby is not deterring him from being in a relationship with her which kind of in this day and age you kind of got to go with the flow it's like yes people are having babies but that doesn't technically mean that they want to be together and they don't have to be together so it's like yes she may be having my baby but i want to be with you we can make it work um going back and he tells her going back to cheyenne is not an option jolie wants to know why his mama has such a problem with her when they don't even know each other. And TK explains to her that um, his mom and Cheyenne can relate to each other in many ways that she wouldn't understand. And it's also an underlying, underlying reason why Sabrina doesn't like Jolie. But that's not fair to Jolie because that's not her fault. And TK also explains he wants peace in his relationship. And that's what Jolie brings. Being with Cheyenne was nothing but drama all the time. Breaking up to make up, fighting, getting back together. And he don't want to do that every day. And TK puts marriage on the table. But Jolie kicks it right back off. She's like, you know, I've barely known you. Um, you know, we can barely talk to each other five days in a row without something else going on. So... Marriage is not an option, sir. Yeah, like I said, she makes him realize that in the three months they have known each other, they have only gotten along for five weeks. So what's what's three months? 12 weeks? And they've only gotten along for five, so they've only gotten along for a month and a week. That's, yeah, no way I'm marrying you. Sabrina, which is so funny, because, okay, let me say this, because I'm a... I love Disney stories, like the little romance stories. And it's like, you know, these people be mean for two days, a couple hours, and all of a sudden they're in love. So I love the aspect of that. But then it's like when you think about reality, especially this situation, it's like, there's no way I would marry you. No, because I would be asking for an annulment like a week later. So no. And when they go home, you know, because it's time for the results. Sabrina and Cheyenne are waiting for them at his house. And TK puts his foot down and tells both women that they don't have it like that. Oh, that they don't have to like it, sorry. But they will respect his relationship with Jolie. Because when they first got there, TK asked his mom, you know, like, first of all, why are you with her? And then why are y'all here? And she says, you know... Your baby mama was having some stomach pains. And TK made a great point. It's like, so if that's the case, why not take her to the hospital? Why would you bring her here? What can I do for her? Just me sitting in her presence ain't going to, you know, all of a sudden make her feel better. And uh, Sabrina hates the fact that her son is so gone off Jolie. And it's not said out loud, but... Sabrina has the thought like mother, like daughter. And it's like, hmm, what does that mean? And the test results come back. Um, the doctor emails them to TK. They are both clean, but Jolie is pregnant. So it's like, dun, dun, dun. And uh, Jolie Sr. is noticing the change in Jolie and asks her if she is pregnant, but she denies it. Sabrina calls TK and tells him since his and Cheyenne's schedules aren't lining up, he had Dr. Sherman test her DNA against the baby and he is the daddy. And TK is skeptical because, number one, he asked Dr. Sherman if he could perform the test when he came to draw his and Jolie's blood and Dr. Sherman told him he didn't have the qualifications to do that. And two, he's been calling Cheyenne to set up an appointment, but she hangs up on him every time or she says she has nothing to prove to him. So she's not doing the test. So it's like how all of a sudden 
you convinced her to do this and then y'all just gonna tell me that that's my baby no i don't trust you and i don't trust Cheyenne. and that's a shame when you can't trust your own mom tk then goes to carter trying to figure out why sabrina seems to hate jolie so much because it's like nobody has a real reason even if she does like cheyenne better there's no reason for sabrina to be acting the way she's acting because Jolie has tried to be respectful and the only time she clapped back is when Sabrina's just outright ridiculous and I always support that because like I said even if you are the parent the adult you know older adult I'm only gonna respect you so much especially if you continue to spit in my face and so Carter tells him no TK tells Carter that Jolie is pregnant and this causes Carter to spit out his coffee because from the beginning, Carter has been telling TK to leave Jolie alone, that the, the families really don't need to intertwine with each other because there's still that, <clears throat> excuse me, the aspect of senior thinking that Carter shot his mom. So it's been low key beef with them. And then, you know, like it just, it's not a good idea for the families to intertwine. <clears throat> excuse me y'all my throat okay so where are we so tk is looking at him thinking he really did have something to do with senior's mama's death because it's like okay i understand that that is a thing between y'all but you told me you didn't do it so i believe you so me telling you that my girl is pregnant shouldn't have you spitting out your coffee like why are you acting like that and um carter says he didn't but he is holding a secret. Well, he didn't say it out loud, but you know, like he's thinking it in his head. He didn't, but he's holding a secret he hopes to take to the grave with him. So Carter flips it on TK, starting to plant, plant seeds of doubt, saying that Jolie is too young. Will she still love him in a few years? He is her first. She hasn't had a chance to experience life yet, which... Is BS because it's like, yeah, that may work for some people, but if you find your one person and you're happy, why can't that just be it? Do you have to date multiple people to find out that, oh, I like this one person and it doesn't make you a hoe. It doesn't make you a bad person to have dated multiple people. But it's like, if my life right now is with you and I'm happy with the way it's going and I want to explore this why then do you get to plant seeds of doubt in someone's head? Like, you know, you're the only person she's been with. She hasn't had a chance to explore other people. She's going to get tired of you. She's going to want to do other things. That may come down the line, but right now I'm happy in this situation. And in this situation, if anybody should be worried, it should really be Jolie because TK is the one who has like, three four sexual partners at one time and i was just like his dad ain't shit for trying to flip that on him because it's just like you trying to push the spotlight onto tk while hiding all your dirt in the back and sadly it works on tk though because he starts to think about it jolie goes to pick junior jolie jr up from school you know letting him drive tk's car and Junior confi confides in her that Linda was, in fact, messing with Jolie Marshall, but it wasn't Senior. It was him, which is a problem because she's like, what, I think almost a 30-year-old woman, and he's only 17, about to be 18. And Jolie, in return, tells him that she's pregnant and letting him know that he's the first one to know. Nobody knows. And they're finally having like a warm brother and sister conversation. And Jolie Jr. makes it known for the last two years since he moved in. He's been hiding in his room to avoid Lynetta. Which of course everybody knows because she makes it known how unhappy she is that he's even there. And she makes it very clear that she hates his existence. 
So he is happy to be bonding with Jolie because it's just like she never talks to him. She's not outright mean or anything like that, but she does not speak to him. He has no bond with her. He really talks to his dad and it seems like that's it. And Jolie apologizes for the lack of relationship between them. And she tells him, you know, as your older sister, I should have tried harder. I should have pushed more. So I'm sorry that you felt any unwelcoming feelings for me because that's not the case. I was just caught up in my own head. But I don't hate you. I don't hate the fact that you're here. And Junior tells her he wants to be a chef. He has plans to go to a culinary school. He goes over to Linda's house to try out recipes. But she cut him off after Jayla jumped on her. Which if you could remember, Lynetta was throwing all of Senior's stuff outside. Because while she was at a nail shop, she heard some gossip about Linda sleeping with the Jolie Marshall. Which would be Senior because he's like the quote unquote man. And people know who he is. His name hold weight. So of course when you hear that, it's like my husband is cheating on me with his physical therapist. And, you know, she acted a fool. But in all actuality, it was the son. And then it's just like, sorry, I took a pause. Cause it's just like, you got to think about it. You show up for work one day and then your client's daughter just jump on your head like, you sleeping with my daddy? And it's like, no, sis, I'm actually sleeping with your brother. But, you know, we ain't going to talk too much about, about that. And we're going to let that be what it is. Lynetta is taking a stroll around the neighborhood, her neighborhood, which is one way she has been dealing with some of her grief and attitude is starting to walk. So she's started losing weight and she started liking the results. But while she's walking, Conway appears out of nowhere and if you remember Conway is Jolie Sr.'s best friend, Jolie's goddad. So you know he's real close to the family and they had a deal and Lynetta isn't holding up her end of the bargain. She tried to make excuses but Conway tells her that the secret he knows will be exposed if she doesn't make Sr. get back in the game. And Lynetta puts a call into a mystery man, you know, telling him that they need to see each other and they need to speak right now. And they agree to meet at their spot. Now, the deal between Conway and Lynetta is getting Senior back in the game so they both can get back to what they're used to. Like, Conway is still doing his thing, but it's not the same as when him and Senior are together because Senior is really like that dude so the mystery man is carter they have had an affair no they had an affair but it ended a year ago but they started back up and for some strange reason while they're having sex they're talking about how much they love their spouses i'm gonna read a excerpt from the story and it's kind of graphic so just bear with me I love my husband, Lynetta whispered as soon as the head of his thick dick pushed past her wet opening, making her gasp. I love my wife, Carter responded as he pulled out and pushed back into her. Like, can y'all understand how creepy that is? It's like, yes, what both of y'all are doing is wrong, but while y'all are having sex, Y'all don't need to express to each other how much y'all love y'all spouses. And the way this started, Lynetta contacted Carter about some money for Jayla's 16th birthday party. And that's when it started. What was supposed to be a one-time thing turned into a full-blown affair until Lynetta ended up pregnant and it stopped. Carter is in love with her. Lynetta tells him that this is the last time and Carter agrees letting it slip that they're about to be grandparents. And she's like, what? What did you say? Because of course Jolie isn't telling her anything because look at who she is. 
And this is... Okay, stop. I also wanted to pull over because Carter thinking that he's in love with her. It's like, what are you in love with? Y'all don't spend any real time together. You're, what, in love with her vagina? Because you have a whole wife, a whole family that you spend the majority of your time with. How are you in love with this woman? But anyway, I digress. We're going to get to that later. And she... Lynetta is shocked, but can't say anything because Carter is the only person that TK has told. So if she goes rushing in trying to confront Jolie, like their business is going to be exposed. So she literally has to be quiet and sit on the fact that she knows her daughter is pregnant. At her first doctor's appointment, Jolie nurse is her aunt who is very unprofessional because when she hears that her name is Jolie, and then she finds out who her dad is. It's just like the doctor had to tell her to leave. But Jolie tells her, no, stay. If you have something to say, get it off your chest. Which in any other real situation, Jolie's aunt, whose name is Jamie, she'd be fired. But somehow, somehow she gets to keep her job. And Jamie called Senior a coward, saying he was very smart in school and could have had a career in football or basketball but chose the street life because of Lynetta. Because I guess she wanted nice things or he wanted to provide for her. And that's what he chose to do. And Jamie says she wanted him with Vanessa instead. Which, even though I don't like Lynetta because she is kind of a terrible person, that has to hurt your feelings. That the man you're in love with, that you marry, that you have a life with, Everybody wanted him with someone else besides you. Like, they couldn't stand her that much. And when they finally get back to the reason why they're there at the doctor's appointment, one baby is actually two. And TK faints. The Marshalls are having dinner. And Lynetta is doing her usual of trying to exclude Junior as if he, as if he isn't even sitting there. Sorry, got tongue-tied. And, you know, which is crazy because he, he cooked dinner and she threw down on that place. She even had seconds, but she's, she's just so rude. And he even tries to get up and leave the table because it's like, you know, after two years of this, I know, I know to stay out your way, lady. I don't even want no issues with you. So I'm going to just get up and go. But Jolie makes him sit back down and she confronts her mom telling her, you know what? Enough is enough. And, you know. While you trying to clown him, you show sure is smacking down on his food. And she says something. Then she says, I was talking to you and Jayla's daddy. And it's like, as much as you hate the fact that it's true, that is also Jolie Jr.'s daddy. Hence him looking like that man and being named after that man. And Jolie tells her she either needs to get over it or leave because she is making everybody else miserable. It's like, we know what the situation is. We have heard about it since we found out that Jolie Jr. has even existed. Everybody is trying to get over it. But here you are just still harping on the situation. And basically, everybody's tired of it. So either you're going to shit or get off the pot. Like, which one is it? And then, jo uh, not Jolie, sorry. Lynetta claims to not hate Jr., but she's hurt. Okay, even with you being hurt, why are you taking it out on this child, though? It's like, talk to your hub, you and your hub, and like, y'all have good times. But then when y'all argue, you always bringing up the fact that he has this outside child. You haven't spoken to this boy. You haven't shown him any love. You haven't given him anything. And you basically make him lock himself up in his room just so he doesn't see you to get on your nerves for you to bring up the fact that you hate that he's even here. So you do hate him. But now that somebody's calling you out on it, you're trying to backtrack and cover it with hurt. And you may be hurt. I'm pretty sure she is hurt. But it's just like you're taking it out on the wrong person. Never blame the kid. The kid didn't ask to be here. And so Jolie feels as if she only stayed because she doesn't want to feel as if she lost to Vanessa. And basically tells her mom, you know... You're trying to compete with a dead woman. 
and Lynetta is regurgitating the story of him really wanting Vanessa because she feels that way because every time somebody in his family even Vanessa's family you know they've all said they would prefer him to have been with Vanessa instead of her so I can see how that can harden Lynetta you know make her into the quote-unquote bitch that she is today because it's just like damn don't nobody want me around so yeah i'm gonna be a bitch to everybody and she tells jolie senior he only tolerated her he never really loved her and you know she says something about him being in love with uh, vanessa and he says you know that's no secret to you she was my first love it's like no you know what she's saying she's saying like you were in love with her and you really only kept me around because of what I told you of how I feel about marriage. It's not the fact that you really wanted to be with me. You really wanted this life with me. You basically didn't want me to go anywhere. And so you basically got to keep me and you got to keep Vanessa too. Because I'm like, we never really fully got into that. Which, of course, Bianca's not a psychologist. And that's really not her focus of the book but just this is me erica speaking personally it's like we never really got into that it's like we're not talking about how you brought your family your other family on vacations like so when you wasn't with lynetta and them were you with vanessa and junior and it's like what was your relationship with vanessa we never really got into that like were you telling her that you loved her like were y'all in a relationship and doing things that couples do while you were quote unquote trying to raise your son because if you weren't in a relationship with her why did you hide him i hope i'm making sense because it's just like now that i'm thinking about it i never really got into this on my other review because it's just like you know what were you doing because if you knew she wasn't going to divorce you after y'all got married you could have brought Junior into the spotlight. You could have said something to her. I don't think you had to deal with Vanessa the way you were dealing with her. And so he he says he asked her if she wanted to go to counseling. And Lynetta refused. He reveals to the kids that Lynetta says she wanted a divorce when Jayla graduates. And Jayla told them, you know, like, don't do it on my account, which goes back to what I said. You know, you trying to stay in the house just so your kids can see, you know, a two-parent household. But if it's miserable in the household, what is the point? So Jayla told them, you know, like, don't stay together on my account, but just know anybody else y'all end up with, it ain't going to be too good for y'all. <laughs> which is so true, which any kid tells their parents, like, you know, if they see their parents in a relationship from the beginning, like, y'all can break up if y'all want to, but y'all going to be single for the rest of y'all life. And he says he wants it all out on the table. Asking her, is there anything else she wants to tell him? And it's almost as if he knows about her affair as well. And is looking at her and saying, is there anything else you want to get out in the open? And in her mind, she's like, you know, tell him this is your chance. Get it all out. But all she says is that she's in love with him, begs him not to leave her. And says that she wants another baby. And just like parents do, they're so gross. He says, you know, we can make that happen. Meet me in the bedroom, you know, like after dinner. And all the kids are like, come on now, for real. <laughs> like, don't nobody want to hear that. And Lynetta apologizes to Junior and promises that things will be better. And Junior just jumps out the gate calling her ma. Which is something else I don't understand. But that's also something in the black community that we do. It's like after somebody apologizes and y'all talk it out. Y'all just supposed to brush it under the rug and move on and be happy with things. Even if that's not the case. Because there's no way she's basically tormented you for two years. And because she says she's sorry and promises to be better. Now all of a sudden you calling her ma. I'm pretty sure your mother, rest her soul, would have a problem with that. So TK is having a Thanksgiving bash at his club 
So Octavia and Jolie are at the mall looking for an outfit together. And Octavia is urging her to look through TK's phone, saying, you know, there has to be something in his phone. You need to check his phone. And at first, Jolie is like, you know, no. If there's anything I need to know, it'll come out eventually. I don't need to check his phone. You know, we good where we at. And on the way out of the store, they run into Riley. They don't speak, but the way Riley looks at her makes Jolie feel away as if there's a possibility that TK could still be messing with Riley. So she does go through his phone, but she gets caught. And TK, you know, tells her he's not cheating on her. He doesn't want to lose her. So at the club, Octavia brings it up. And Jolie tells her, you know, no, we good. Ain't nothing going on. And she was like, you must have got caught. And Jolie tells her, you know, as my friend, I'm telling you that I'm happy in my relationship. So can we just let that be that? Like, I don't need you to urge me to look through his phone. If something does come up, you can say I told you so later. But right now, you know, basically I'm good. But Octavia shows her Nazima's Snapchat where TK is standing behind her vibe into the music so Jolie tells her you know stop showing me things pertaining to TK because like I said if it's meant for her to know she will know so she sees Nazima heading to the bathroom and follows her she has her girls guard the door and Nazima tells her I ain't shake I'll murk your ass cousin or not so Jolie pulls out her gun and goes across Nazima's face and you know TK burst into the bathroom trying to defuse the situation, but Jolie puts her heel in Nazima's chest, telling TK to tell Nazima that there's nothing there for her anymore. Like, basically, she's his boyfriend. So, to stop messing with her, stop putting stuff on social media, whatever. So, TK tells Nazima to stop, stop poking at her on social media. TK is pissed at her, telling her this situation could potentially shut his club down. You know, like, you messing with my business. You messing with my livelihood now. And so, while TK is putting Nazima in the back of her car with her friends, Jolie leaves. Like, she basically leaves out the door. Like, okay, you gonna see to this bitch? Even though you mad at me, like, okay, don't nobody care. Let her leave. But you could tell he's... Basically trying to talk Nazima out of potentially filing a report, suing, any type of thing. And I can see that on his end, but I also get Jolie's part. It's like, okay, yeah, you mad at me, but you just leave me hanging. And I basically see you sweet talking this girl on my way out. So cool. I'm leaving. So she calls an Uber. And as she's walking outside, TK hears the Uber call out her name. So he's like, you know... Where are you going? Where you think you going? He's like, I'm going home. You know, you can continue to tend to your bitch. Leave me alone. And he grabs her phone and her gun and, you know, tells the Uber driver because she was going to go home to her parents' house. And he puts in his address and tells her to go home and she better be there when he gets there. Ever been listening to your favorite podcast and think, hey, I want to start my own. Then you need Anchor. It's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. First, everyone's favorite word, free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can even make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. So Cheyenne is still fucking with Major, who has pieced together that that's actually his baby. But Cheyenne tries to deny it. But Major, like he already peep game. He knows that she is just trying to pin this baby on TK to mess up Jolie's and TK's relationship. Sabrina invites her to Thanksgiving dinner. And while she's on Facebook, Cheyenne sees that Nazima has tagged Jolie in a post. And it's Nazima laid up in the hospital bed 
with scars and stitches saying, yeah, my cousin had to attack me over a nigga. We both fucking and I'm going to continue to fuck him. And it's just like, really? And Cheyenne, like she basically laughs and says, yeah, dealing with a person like TK ain't easy. And Jolie is finding that out real early. And so while TK is in the kitchen, he's on FaceTime with Jolie and she calls him ugly and he says my twins is gonna look just like me so what do you mean so Cheyenne finds out that Jolie is pregnant and she rushes into Sabrina's office and tells her like did you know that this bitch is pregnant so now they both find out about the the twins and they weren't in Sabrina's office they were actually in Carter's office but Sabrina, Sabrina takes Cheyenne into her office and she spills some of her own tea sabrina knows about the affair with carter and lynetta and he know um, and she knows about him being in love with lynetta she followed him one time to the apartment that is carter and lynetta's quote-unquote spot and saw them together and while talking she pieced together for herself that when the affair stopped, she could tell because Carter had became depressed and Lynetta was pregnant and that's when the affair ended. So while Carter was walking around depressed about the ending of the affair, she had been sleeping with other men to dull her pain. And this is something I, I just don't get. I do not get it. Because it's like the fact that you knew about the affair and when she followed him that day, I guess they had the window open. So it's just like she saw them together and it was just so passionate and they were having sex without a condom. And I think they told each other that they loved each other. And it's just like you saw this and you stayed. You didn't let them know that you were there and that you knew. And even when the affair ended in your hu- your husband, somebody that you have rights to, that you have papers on, was walking around sad about the ending of said affair, you still stayed anyway. But to dull that pain, you went out and slept with other men. To do what? Because it didn't ease your pain. It probably made you feel good for a few minutes, but then you still had to sit there in the fact that your husband has feelings for someone else to the point where he is moping in your face how he is still alive i do not know because i would kill him i just i don't understand there's no way that i know that you're cheating on me because if I believe in monogamy and it's just supposed to be me and you in this relationship. There's no way you're going to sit in my face sad about the fact that you are no longer having sex with another man's wife. Because it ain't like she's single and she's just a side chick. Lynetta is also married. She also has a family. Whew, child. And then... For her to put it together like right then and there while she's talking to her son's ex-girlfriend. You put together the fact that this woman was married. So you were about to have an outside baby outside of your three children with your husband. And he could still just sit in your face. Ain't no way. Um, And she, which is also baffling to me. Sabrina went to Jolie Sr. and tried to sleep with him, but he turned her down. So it's like, how does that work for you? You tried to get some get back and couldn't even get it. Because this man flat out turned you down like, nah. And at the Marshalls, Senior, Jolie Sr. gets a call from his brother, James, I believe. I forgot the brother's name, but... He finds out about the fight between Jolie and Nazima and basically tells Senior that they're going to have to pay for her medical bills because she attacked her with a gun and like stunk. She 
he exaggerated the story, but basically it's like, okay, you did hit her with the gun and you did step on her chest, but he made it sound much more worse than what it actually was. And so Senia and Lynetta are going off on Jolie about her changing and doing crazy stuff behind TK. Jolie refutes that he did the same thing by giving a football to get in game to get in the game for Lynetta. And then there's banging on the door before they can get into that even further. At the door is Conway. He's been shot three times, so he's bleeding out on the ground. And while waiting on the ambulance, Conway is trying to speak. He thinks it was Carter or his people that did this to him. So he's trying to say Lynetta's name. And she knows that he's about to snitch. So she talks over him, basically telling him to save his energy. Don't say anything. Just be quiet. And then Conway mutters something about 22 years ago. Keep in mind, he just said Lynetta's name and 22 years ago. Jolie is 22. So now Senior thinks Lynetta and Conway slept together and Jolie could potentially be his. So after everyone jumps in the ambulance with Conway, Lynetta is left at home by herself. And she calls Carter frantically, you know, saying, why would you do that? Why would you bring that to my door? And he swears it wasn't him and tells her, you know, come to our spot. At first he says, you know, like, let me come to you. She's like, no, this is my home. He was like, well, let's meet at our spot. You know, don't even clean up. Let me clean you up because she has blood all over her. And it's just like, y'all are so creepy, man. And at the hospital, Jolie Sr.'s dad, James Sr., yeah, because uh, Jolie's brother is James Jr., is there because he fell. So, you know, it's basically like a reunion at the hospital. And they rehash the past. His dad still feels away, and Joe Lee Sr. tells his kids, you know, don't pay any attention to him. His family shunned him, and he's not about to keep arguing with them about the same old thing, so just ignore them. So James Sr. tells him about 10 years ago, he wanted to leave the nursing home. He was even willing to stay with him. But James Jr. told him that Jolie Sr. said he didn't have room and didn't care if he lived or died. And Sr. had to tell him, that's a lie. That's a damn lie, in fact. Uh, Junior, James Jr. never told me anything like that. If I had known you, would have come to, you wanted to come and stay with me, I had plenty of room. You could have easily been in my house. So why you being mad at somebody? Be mad at your other son for lying straight to your face. Everyone everyone now knows that Jolie is pregnant because her auntie basically spilled the beans. And Conway is going to pull through. But Senior refuses to give him well wishes until he finds out what was going on and what he was trying to say. Because it's like, if you are possibly my daughter's father, ain't no way I'm wishing you well. I might kill you myself. And so... TK is pissed because after coming back from one of her doctor's appointments, Jolie has been spotting because of all of the stress she has been going through with her family. But she hid it from him until the visit with their midwife and doula. I hope I'm saying that right. And, you know, he's like, these are my kids. I need to know what's going on with you. So she tells him everything that's going on in her family and all the drama and how her dad now feels like he's not even her father. And TK is like, what? You look just like this man. What is he talking about? But I'm like, he and his feelings right now. He ain't thinking about logic. All he heard that night was Lynetta and 22 years ago. And his daughter's 22 years old. So it's like, even if he's not her father, it's like, now all I can think of is, did you sleep with my woman 22 years ago? And so TK tells her, you know, they're going on a vacation, a vacation, if you will. And while he's telling her to pack, he gets an email from G from the GPS in his car and there's something amiss. 
So he rushes over to his dad's office, knocking his computer over. And he has put together that Carter is sleeping with Lynetta. And Carter admits his love for her. But because it can't go anywhere, he's sticking with his wife. He also thinks Sabrina wouldn't be with him if he didn't have any money. Which makes no sense because y'all was married before and she was a principal. Y'all was making it. So how do you think that she wouldn't be with you if you didn't have any money? And then another thing, because it can't go anywhere with Lynetta, he's sticking with his wife. I'm going to get to that in one second. Sabrina can hear the conversation. And Carter doesn't think she loves him past the money. So she bursts into the office, begging him on her knees not to leave her. And I have a problem with this. Because it's like, out of all of the stuff that I said earlier, then you say because, because you can't leave your wife for this woman, you're basically going to stick with your wife. So it's better to have somebody than to have nobody at all. And Sabrina, why do you come into this office begging him not to leave you? If anything, you should be the one rushing to pack your bags and make him beg you. There's, He's basically telling you to your face he don't want you. And your thing is to beg and say, please don't leave you. Like, what, do y'all got a prenup or something? Y'all got the sex shop. That's a legal business. The prostitution ring, you probably can't get nothing off that, but... You can go start your own business. You could cut that in half and I'm I don't know. Like I just don't get it. I guess this is where feelings come in and I just don't I guess I think with logic cuz ain't no way. I just can't, like I'm stuck for a second y'all cuz the more I think about it the more mad I get. I'm just like, "Really? This man has played in your face for how long?" And you allow it. Then you come back begging him not to leave you. I would help that nigga pack his bags. You tell me that because... Like, I'm harping on it because it's just like... Ain't no way you could... I could hear you say because it's not like you're talking to me. She just... She hears the conversation. But there's no way I can hear you say that you're basically settling for me. And because you're settling for me, now you feel like if I didn't have these things, you wouldn't be with me. Nigga, I was with you before you had those things. So what are you talking about? It just happened one night that somebody propositioned us. And yeah, I took the money when you didn't want to, but that put us in a better position. So if anything, I feel like you wouldn't be here if we didn't have this money. I put this family on. I made this happen. I just can't. And so when TK gets home, Jolie is sitting in the dark on the phone with Octavia. And she's thinking he rushed out to be with another woman. Because it's just like, how you talk about being on this vacation? You get something on your phone and then you rush out of here. Now, if it was a different situation, yeah, you wouldn't rush to think that he was cheating. But this is TK. He don't have the best track record. Excuse me. So it's just like, yeah, I don't know what to think about you. I can't trust you. And so he quickly calms her down, you know, telling her he don't want nobody else but her. They are in this thing for real now. She got his babies. He ready to settle down, you know, basically. And Senior goes to visit his dad and they make up and finally hash out everything <laughs> And James Sr. asks if he is still married to Lynetta. And like I said, once again, another person who can't stand Lynetta, really don't want her around. It's like, girl, we could really do without you. But, you know, you're here, I guess. And he also mentioned something about a tick that Sr. had or has. And this is something I feel like should have been mentioned from the very beginning. But... I don't know, because it's just like, if it was some... Because it basically so, makes him sound like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and something that just happens and 
he can go he can blank out not remember anything whatsoever and it's just like why are we just not hearing about this basically halfway through the series finale and they t ugh, excuse me tk and jolie decide to go to key west and he asked her would she give him a second would she have given him a second chance if he wasn't rich and she makes the joke like you're rich and he's like come on be serious and she said you know when i met you i thought you were just a cashier at a sex shop i didn't know who you were so yeah i actually would and in return jolie expresses apprehension on being with him because she is not a hood girl but tk tells her that's exactly why he loves her she brings him peace and balance tk has bought an engagement ring and he set up a meeting with senior to ask for his permission but jolie senior reminds him of a few things jolie has been through a few things with tk and let's go down the list she has been hospitalized she now carries a gun she attacked her cousin she was heartbroken and stressed she wouldn't even eat when he cut her off she is now two months pregnant and he has had sex with her her best friend her cousin and whoever else at the time so senior asked him what would make me want to hand over my daughter to you and tk has to sit there for a minute and think about all that and it's like damn in that short amount of time she has been through a lot for me but he promises to take care of jolie mentally emotionally physically and intimately tk asked him why was he taking the money he gave jolie and not putting it towards her studio she deserves it and jolie senior agrees and shows him that he bought her building for her and senior is about to warn him about something but jolie bursts into his office crying and covered in blood so we go back in half an hour before oh no an hour and a half before and jolie went to go visit conway and while she's standing outside his door she overhears a conversation where he confesses to having a hand and killing Senior's mama, which infuriates Jolie. And she somehow manages to steal scrubs and a jacket and confronts Conway before stabbing him multiple times and killing him. And she also somehow manages to just slip out of the hospital and go home. Which makes no sense if she's covered in blood. Nobody stopped her. And back in Senior's office, Jolie is drifting in and out of consciousness. So TK keeps her talking while he removes the bloody clothes. And he also calls a tech guy that he has on standby and has him hack into the hospital security and erase the footage. Later, Jolie asks him if he's scared of her now and he laughs because I guess he doesn't see this as an issue. And as the family is leaving Conway's funeral, Amber, who is one of Conway's baby mamas, approaches Senior wanting to talk. And he tells her to come to his house and they'll talk in his office. Lynetta can't stand her, can't stand Amber, because she included Amber in a threesome with her and Jolie Senior. And after the threesome, Lynetta tried to cut I mean, Amber tried to cut Lynetta out of the picture. So basically just wanting Senior for herself. And it's like, see, that's the downside of inviting someone into your bedroom. Because she got a taste of your man, then she wanted it all for herself. So Amber tells Jolie Senior that Conway was always jealous of him. And she had recordings to prove it. The first recording is Conway drunk saying he made senior if he hadn't killed his mama he wouldn't be the savage everyone feared which is fucked up within itself 
And the second one is about him having to pay someone $10,000 to keep quiet about knowing his role in Senior's mama's murder. The last one is the most sick. He called Jolie under the guise of checking on her and she sent him a video of her dancing and he begins to jack off to it and she can hear him in the bathroom. And Senior asks her, why is she bringing this information two days, not two days, two years later? And Amber says she didn't want him to try to avenge his murder without knowing how grimy his friends is. And Senior says he doesn't want to hear that. It's like, you've known this information for how long? You knew I would protect you. If I'm so, if everybody fears me in the way um, Conway was saying he did, you know, like... I could have protected you. There's no reason for you to sit on this information. And that sick bastard was lusting after my daughter. I should have been done something to him. And I guess uh, Conway was also physically abusive to her. So it's just like, I could have been nipped this in the bud. The Kincaids are closing down their prostitution ring. And, you know, basically handling sensations as just a sex shop. So Cheyenne and Chastity will be going down to minimum wage. And Chastity accepts, but Cheyenne declines. She says, I have a baby to take care of since your bitch ass son is not going to help me. And Sabrina clocks that TK is not really the father. She's like, you know, I was coming from a place of hurt, willing to help you in any way I can. But now, I guess basically they're good now. Little girl's don't play with me and don't speak on my son that way. She then calls Major Cheyenne does and asks if he's ready to be a father. And he tells her no. And, you know, basically clowns the fact that her plan must have fell through. Sabrina and Carter had a heart to heart getting all of their dirt out in the open. And Sabrina questions if he's still in love with Lynetta. And his only response is that he'll never leave her. Which is such, like, it's a problem for me. I do not understand this relationship. I'm like, both of y'all must be in it because y'all just been married for so long. But you can always start over. And I meant to mention earlier, when he said that he was in love with Lynetta, he was in love with her submissiveness. It's nothing really about her. He just wants Sabrina to be more submissive and let him lead instead of just always having answers and I guess being a strong woman which that's not to say that submissives aren't strong but that's basically what he's saying like she has an answer for everything all the time just let the man quote unquote man lead and just sit back sometimes and it's just like if that's what you need for your fragile ego I guess And it's the Marshalls versus the Kincaids in Top Golf, which is actually just a front for a surprise proposal to Jolie. And of course, she accepts. It's beautiful. And as they're leaving, Jolie sees Riley come in with Major. And she wants to say something, but TK tells her, you know, ignore it. But of course, Jayla, our rah rah sister, snatches Riley's wig off and they get into a fight, which I find so funny. Um, It's Christmas time and Jolie gives TK a watch, a keychain with their picture on it, and a bigger picture of her cupping her stomach with a beautiful message to him from her and the babies. And it was so funny. When she gave him the key ring, she said, you know, this is for you to look down at when you go out to cheat on me. And it's just like, she may have been joking, but I was like, that's some truth underneath that quote unquote joke. And TK gives her with the la- the latest model Beamer to replace the one she had to give up a few years ago. They get to her parents' house and the police are there asking questions about Riley and Major because they were murdered last night in his car and they suspect Jayla because she had just got into a fight with Riley at the top golf place 
But Jolie sends them away since there is no one being arrested. Because she's like, you know, are you here to arrest anyone? And they're like, no, we're just here to ask some questions. And then they also show them pictures of the murder scene. And Jolie tells them, wow, you should really warn somebody before you just flash those pictures out. But if you're not arresting anyone and it's Christmas Day, please leave us alone. So, of course, right after, Jolie Sr. and TK are in the car together and they asked her if she did it and she was scrolling twitter when riley tagged her in the video of her having sex with major on only fans and that was the last straw so while tk was sleeping she slipped out and i think sl stabbed both of them and then like came back in got cleaned up in his beach house and came back to bed and tk questioned you know how did you get into my beach house the door is locked and she tells him no it wasn't he was like yes it was she was like okay i'm telling you it wasn't because i got cleaned up and i came back to bed and i didn't break in um uh, so jolie's gift to her dad is the restored restaurant you know so he can get it back up and running the other marshals show up and they all hug and jamie apologizes for it being so long and as they as they're hugging Senior starts to cry, which makes Jolie cry because she's never seen her dad cry and is glad to see him reunited with his family. TK is 30. Woo! I thought he was 30 already. Okay, so it's an eight year gap. I thought it was like a 10 or 11 year gap between them, but it's only eight. If she's 22 and he's now 30. So Jolie gives him a few gifts and feed him breakfast. She also planned a brunch with the whole family together. So, you know, they show up with their matching outfits. They cute. Everybody having a good time. Then Cheyenne shows up. And Sabrina asks her to leave, you know, to not interrupt their family dinner. And I guess that was the final straw for Cheyenne. So Cheyenne tells her that she has, she has nerve sitting across from the woman that she hates. And Jolie tells tells her Sabrina don't even know her mama to hate her. And Cheyenne reveals that Lynetta and Carter have been having an affair. Oh, and Sabrina knew about it. She was planning to do something to Jolie to make her lose the babies, but then she backed out. And as soon as she's done talking, Jayla jumps on her. And then Jolie passes out. And this time, Jada is locked up for fighting in public. And since this isn't her first time, she is being kept for a week in, I guess, juvenile detention. And this thing, this is what I was talking about earlier when I said, I think in the last episode, about kids growing up in the same household and being two completely different people. Jolie being the quote unquote good girl, but out of nowhere, she done killed three people and I guess Jayla been fighting since she came out the uterus. It's just so weird. And then it's just like, is Jolie the only one that gets that tick? Or is somewhere down the line, is Jayla and Jolie Jr. going to get that same tick? Are they all going to be crazy? I don't know. Um. So it's Senior's turn to tell Lynetta that he wants a divorce. Um, you know, since she couldn't put it out on the table that she was sleeping with this man, but she constantly wanted to throw up in his face what he did. But Lynetta refuses because she's pregnant because she tells him, you know, you can't divorce me. I'm pregnant. But senior says, great. Who does it belong to me or Carter? And she can't give a response right away because she has started back sleeping with Carter and she was pregnant for him for him once before so she doesn't really know and he tells her to be gone when he gets back because he's going to the hospital to check on Jolie since she passed out and Lynetta says oh nope skipped ahead so when he does get back you know he tells her you know I thought I told you to get out and she says she'll even get a job to get him not to leave her but she's never worked a day in her life like Senior has taken care of her 
from the very beginning. She doesn't know what it's like to work. She's been a housewife all her life. And now they're going to therapy to make their marriage work because neither wants neither one of them <laughs> wants to give up. If I can only get my words together. And so now it's Jolie's birthday as well as her baby shower slash gender reveal. And I want gender reveals to go away. It's like every year is something that's a big hoopla that everybody does because it's the trend. But I want gender reveals to go away. They should never be a thing. Just have a baby shower. And even then, I don't even really like those. It's just like, but if you're going to, if you have to do one, just do the baby shower. Leave gender reveals as a thing of the past. And they surprise her with her dance studio in which they light up, you know, uh, the sign with the color, you know, the gender reveal, whether it's going to be a boy or a girl. So it's lit up with pink and she has to ask, you know, what is going on? So they tell her, you know, this is your surprise, your dance studio, but you're also having two twin girls. And... Later on that night, while Jolie is in bed, TK sneaks off and kills Cheyenne. He put he has on gloves. He has like some type of poison or something inside of a needle that he sticks into her arm and tells her, you know, it didn't have to come to this. You could have just chilled, minded your business, went on about your merry little way. Now I got to kill you. So now it is time for Junior and Jayla's graduation, but of course at different times because they went to different schools for some reason, which I still don't get that. Um, Linda runs up to Junior, jumping on him and kiss him, but before the parents can fully explode, you know, ask them what is she doing, Jolie goes into labor. And so she's having a natural birth. And the family watches behind the glass as Jolie is in a pool. And TK is behind her delivering their twin girls, Kimora and Kiel, I think. It's K-I-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E, so I'm going to say Kiel. And in our epilogue, TK and Jolie have been married for a year. And they are current. No. Yeah. I'm looking at my own notes and somehow I'm confusing myself. So TK and Jolie married a year after being engaged. And they are currently on their honeymoon with their two twin daughters. Because, of course, being a girl dad, he couldn't leave his babies at home. And TK, no, TK, Jesus, Erica. Jolie is currently pregnant with their son. Sabrina and Carter completely closed sensations and they are now traveling the world. Lynetta and Senior have a two-year-old son, Jalen. They went to therapy and got their marriage back on track, which I find very hard to believe. And Jayla, Jayla is Jalen's nanny and going to school part-time for a business degree. And Junior finished culinary school. He's working in the family business, the chicken shack. Plus, he has his own food truck. And he is currently on and off again with Linda. All right, my good people. That is the end of Jolie and Keandre against the, in his Good Girl series, the three-part series. I hope you enjoyed. And you'll come back next week. I don't really know what book I want to do next week because although I have notes for she gave her all to the hood's finest I don't know if I want that to be the next book I might do another book and then come back to that series I really want to do thugs the thug series by Wahida Clark I hope I'm saying her name right I think I might do that one and then go into Siobhan Latrice because I have so many of her books that I really love. But I think I am. So if you come back, next week should be the first install of Wahida's Thug series. Which is Thugs and the Women Who Love Them. It is a seven part series. But I only own 
six of the books I don't have that last book and to be completely honest I don't think I want to read it because although I love this series even by book six six should have been the end and that's just my personal opinion but um yeah I'm gonna get started on that and I'll see you guys on the next episode peace my beautiful people